Mr. Baker's room. Yes, sir. Oh, I was looking for him. Oh, I was looking for together, man. Don't you realize what this means? The Dowager Duchess Uptight is coming to dinner this evening. <gasps> Don't scream. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed, your voice should be lower. <laughs> yes, yes, much lower. Come now. We have many things to see to before she arrives. <laughs> no one views the comings and goings here at Uptight Abbey with as much scrutiny as the Dowager Duchess. You know how her ladyship likes everything to be just so. Uh, just so perfect. No. Just so proper. <laughs> no. Just so pristine. Just so, as in just so. Just so, just so. <laughs> <laughs> just so, just so. Ah, uh, but what about the... There's nothing uh, to fret about, Mr. Bakersman. Mrs. Hughes had the fresh linen press and the good silver set out. <laughs> yes, and uh, and what about the... Um, Mrs. Paddygake has things well in hand in the kitchen. Wonderful. And what about the... Um, I'm sure the footmen are at the ready. And as butler and under-butler to the entire uptight family, Mr. Bakersman, we have our own duties we should attend to. To which we should attend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how flustered you've made me, Bakersman? Even my grammar is out of whack. <laughs> Good gravy, what is that? <laughs> it's a body, Mr. McDonald. <laughs> a body? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Dead one, I believe. A dead body. Here, in the drawing room of Uptight Abbey, such things are not done, Mr. Bakersman. I didn't do it. <laughs> I swear I didn't do it. I, I'm new here. I just started last week. I just came in and I find something. But the gas wasn't lit. And so I said to myself, I said, you're going to trip on something if you aren't more careful. And I came around to get the lights. And sure enough, I tripped on something. And that something turned out to be this gentleman here. But I swear it be dead. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I just came in and I found something. Please, Mr. Baker, calm yourself. I didn't know. I didn't know. Look, it's a hysterical, Baker. Control yourself. I shall have to slap you if you can't find out. Right then. Is everything all right in here, Mr. McDonald? What? Mrs. Hughes. Hello, Mrs. Hughes. Good to see you, Mrs. Hughes. Wonderful to see you, Mrs. Hughes. Excellent as always, Mrs. Hughes. Extremely perfect and far beyond expectations. Such gentlemen. Did you just slap Mr. Baker's man, Mr. McDonald? What? 
Please clap. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. It is part of the drawing room routine. Ever since Lord Thurston Dunstan Houston Uptight, the first Lord of Uptight, found his fireplace songs misplaced by one of the maids. As punishment, one of the servants was to be struck every hour on the hour. One slap to match the hour of the day, actually. Two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Bigdon. I never knew that. The rich history here at Uptown Abbey makes one proud to serve, doesn't it? Indeed, Mrs. Hughes. Well, I best check out the rest of the house. Have to keep things humming for the Dowager Duchess, you know. See you both shortly. Her ladyship will be down in a matter of moments. Thank you, Mrs. Hughes. Keep up the good work, gentlemen. You too, Mrs. Hughes. (laughs) Who is this dead person? Well, I haven't had a chance to look, have I? What with you and Hughes popping in? You and yours? Please, no time for bad grammar, as I said. I mean, you and Mrs. You, sir. So far, my grammar is the only thing still <clears throat> intact. What should we do? Call the police? Are you insane? Call the police to Uptight Abbey? Oh, propriety, Mr. Bakersman. Propriety. Let's see who this unfortunate soul is first. Help me help him up. Is it body Oh, good him! Oh, no! <laughs> Who was it? You didn't see his face. My eyes closed. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not good at this. It's our master, Lord Uptight. Someone has murdered the master. <laughs> Help me get him onto the damage water. The what? <laughs> the, the, the chest of him. The, the, the divan. The, the settee, the, the chaise lounge. The here! The here! The here! Mr. McDonald, <laughs> I was just speaking with the footman about the amount of manure that they traipsed into the hallway. What's going on here? Oh, 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 oh nothing, Mrs. Hughes. Just, uh, having a small chat with Bakersman, that's all. Uh, so, yes, you see, you, 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 you dust the pan with flour before adding your pastry dough. Ah, yes, yes, but make sure you, you tuck it tightly into the pan to uh, maximise the amount of filling you can put in. Oh, I see. <laughs> now, would that be prune filling? If you like. I am fond of prunes. <laughs> I should go get some right now. Oh, sit down, you idiot! <laughs> Who's under you? What? 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 Oh. <laughs> it's Bakersman. He is under me. He is the under butler. I am the head butler. He is under me. <laughs> God, I need a drink. Stop that right now, McDonald. You know what I mean. Up with you. Up with you both. I thought there was a lot of manure in the hallway. <laughs> Way down? <laughs> when did she leave her room? Why? It takes Lady Daphne exactly seven minutes to get from her bedroom across the second floor, three and a half minutes down to the first landing, two minutes admiring herself at the landing mirror, three minutes down the grand staircase, 13 seconds to adjust her stockings after all those stairs, and a minute and a half to reach the entry of this drawing room. Now, when did she leave her room? About 17 minutes and 43 seconds ago. Good gracious. That means she should be arriving just about... Now. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I spent an extra 30 seconds in the landing near. I think it did me a world of good. Oh, my. What's the matter with Lord Uptight? He doesn't look at all well. No, madam. I, I'm afraid he's not well at all. Something terrible has happened. Oh, no. We're out of jelly. No, no matter. The lard is a well stop. <laughs> That's a relief. I'd hate for us to be in a jam of a jelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, madam. 
It appears Lord Uptight has been stabbed. Stabbed? As in, with a knife? I'm afraid so, madam. <laughs> the heck you say? <laughs> I mean, how incredible. The last time I saw him, he was just so, so... Alive, madam? Yes, that's it. <laughs> alive. Thank you, McDonald. What would you like us to do, madam? Well, we can't leave him here. Not with the Dowager Duchess arriving. <gasps> Not in front of her ladyship, Mr. Bakersman. <laughs> we cannot leave him here. That's certain. A wise decision, madam. Have you tried propping him up, say, oh, over by the bar, or oh, perhaps next to the pond ficus? Mm, yes, come, Mr. Bakersman, let's prop his lordship up. Perhaps I can find some fresh cases for these pillows. <laughs> I really have to touch him again, madam. Come, come, Mr. Bakersman, do not question her ladyship's request. No, that's all right, MacDonald. I'd be hesitant to touch Lord Horatio on a good day, let alone a day like today. Mm. Now, when I first met Lord Horatio Winston Edelbert Jacobson Uptight III, I said to myself, now there is a man you shall never touch. And wedding night, I had some serious reservations about it, but I told myself, Daphne Jablonski, he is your husband, your unbelievably rich husband. So I gave it a go, as they say. Fortunately, it was that one go was all it took, otherwise I wouldn't have my lovely daughter. Um, uh, Annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mother. Oh, there's my ray of sunshine. Oh. And, uh, I. <laughs> we must be brave. Let's see a smile, dearest. Yes, Mother. <laughs> Why am I smiling? Oh. How should I put this? Honey, your father is, is, um, is... <clears throat> dead, madam. Uh, yes, dead. Thank you, Miss Wiggins. A pleasure, madam. Father's dead? Yes, my dear. Really? Yes. I mean, oh no, that's just terrible. However did it happen? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well done, Mr. McDonald. <laughs> Not at all, madam. <laughs> <clears throat> Come, Mr. Bakersman. We have preparations to make for the Duchess's arrival. But what about the de... <laughs> His lordship. Leave it. Him. His lordship alone. Should you need anything at all, madam, please don't hesitate to ring. I shall await your back in the hall, my dearest love. <laughs> What? <laughs> Medea Rex Lava, as they say in Latin. Uh, Adam? <laughs> Miss? Mazia Mama Boo Madam, uh, Miss. So, father's dead. I'm shocked. Shocked and appalled. The delighted shocked and appalled. I know. Ain't it something? <laughs> <laughs> the things will be different now, Anna Bella. I know. They'll be better. Henrietta! Please, Mother, you know it's true. Father was a tyrant, a blackguard, a cad, and a villain. No offense, Daddy. <laughs> yes, your father was incorrigible, clammy, and crass. Oh, how I loved him. <laughs> Perhaps now we can live the way that we've always dreamed. <laughs> Especially with all that money. <laughs> Money? 
So that's why you killed him. Hermia, <laughs> honey, what are you saying? I, I'm, I'm saying you killed father. <gasps> Preposterous. Possible. For sure. Perfectly plausible. <laughs> Piffle. <laughs> that I killed your father, my husband, the thirteenth lord of Uptight Abbey, for his wealth. For his wealth and notable position. For his vast wealth and notable position. For his obscene abundance of wealth, fortune, position, and empty pocket change. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, Gloria, how could you? Well, I, I, I would have done the same thing. That's a little girl. <laughs> and, and I would have used all that money to make some real changes around here. Let's face it, Mother, this is 1920. Let's get with the times. Victorian was so two decades ago. <laughs> One thing at a time, honey. <laughs> Mommy! Oh, you know what? That's what Lord Octave said the last time I woke him 
吗？charity works. All those children pining for a family and healthy lungs. <laughs> but you know the one thing about charity work, Lady Uptight, it doesn't pay. Oh, <laughs> I'll pay you. <laughs> <laughs> After reading at the orphanage, I headed to the ladies' home of St. Loretta, the condescending. Well, I teach knitting to unwed mothers. Then it was off to the wild home for wilted dandies, where I give clothing advice to the destitute. Then a quick round of badminton with Winky Farrell and the boys of the club, followed by a meeting at the board of the Greek Manchester Handbell Wrestling Society. Yes. Then it was off to St. Benedict's Ward for wayward sailors. <laughs> what do you do there? What a glorious day to be alive, eh? <laughs> How is it? Was there something I said? <gasps> oh, Lord. What if we hear? Yeah. Oh, no. It's that blood. I've never been very good around... around... <laughs> oh, my God! Right as rain takes all the property. Hi. What a what a large kitchen knife. How how dreadful. <laughs> Mr. Wainwright, such class. Mm. He even paints in the most charming style. <laughs> that was something, wasn't it? Well, perhaps I should um, look 
over in that direction so as not to see all the... Uh, the I'm going over there. <laughs> well, it seems that Horatio has had some sort of accident, has he? It appears that Daddy has been murdered, Marcus. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> <laughs> murmured? Did you say he murmured? N no, Marcus, darling, murdered! Murdered! He's been murdered! What's that? Murdered, you say? Oh, how fascinating. I mean, who on earth would want to murder? Well, practically anyone, I suppose. <laughs> there was no love between Horatio and myself. That's no secret. The Uptights and the Wainwrights were always at odds over who really should be in charge of the Abbey. Bad blood, I suppose. Oh dear, I shouldn't have said that. Oh. <laughs> Let cold. <laughs> now. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, sir. John, that's so charming. Shall I show you to the door, Mr. Wayne? Oh, no, allow me. I'm right here. Back off, you cows, he's mine! <laughs> I want to marry him and have a veritable fleet of babies by him and live forever here in this abbey, which Marcus says is rightfully is, and that he kill anyone who stands in the way of his title! <laughs> well, what a day, hey? I really must be off, you've all been so kind. My best with that situation, not to mention all of... For that. <laughs> 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 My apologies, sir. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> My, but you are a tall drink of water. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and I could go for a tall drink of water. <laughs> Charming. Charming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I've not seen you before. After all, I never forget a face. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Bakersman, sir. Very nice to meet you, Bakersman, sir. Uh, just Bakersman, sir. Just Bakersman, sir? What an odd name. No, my name is Dennis, sir. Dennis, sir? Your name gets older by the minute. <laughs> your name is Dennis Bakersman, sir. I'm new to the Abbey. Ah, yes, that explains it. I'm Marcus Wainwright. Marcus Hugh. Marcus, me. No, Hugh. Me. Hugh, Hugh. Me, me. No, really? <laughs> That's enough of you two. I'm starting to get a headache. Mr. Wainwright is the cousin of Lord and Lady Uptight. In any event, it was very nice to meet you. And Hugh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone says so. Down to tell you, the Dowager Duchess has arrived. <gasps> General consternation! It's <laughs> oh, a little more even than I had originally thought. Places, <laughs> everyone! Duchess, Lady Guinevere, Grace, Elizabeth, Helene, Marmalade, Uptight. Your Ladyship, Duchess. 
is uptight. My name is Baker's Minion. It is an honour to meet you. I'm new to that Abbey, but my father... What's what? going on? Where is everyone? I'm used to much more pageantry when I make an entrance. <laughs> May I help you, young man? Oh, I was just speaking to the Duchess. Uh, as I was saying, oh, ma'am. You are speaking to the Duchess now. That is Agnes Dundle Bunny, my nurse and constant companion and emergency contact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Dowager Duchess, Lady Quinnifer Grace. Uh, Lady Quinnifer Grace. Oh dear. You there, my name again, if you please. The Dowager Duchess, Lady Guinevere Grace Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Eileen Marmala <laughs> Uptight. Oh, there you see, when you've reached my age and position, you need never know your own name. It's much more important that other people know it. <laughs> Well said, Dundle Bunny, well said. <laughs> Mother Uptight, how wonderful to see oh, you. Oh, Daphne, my dear, Ooh, you look lovely. Lovely? Oh, and tired. But I suppose that's what happens when you're an American posing as a British lady. <laughs> <laughs> and where's my lovely granddaughter? And Gloria. Hello, Grandma. Hello, my dear. Oh, oh, good heavens, child. Your kisses are like old wood. It's as if you've been practicing on a nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder she's not married. Oh, but I was hoping that Marcus and I Marcus? <sighs> Hello, Duchess. Mr. Wainwright, do not for one moment believe that you can beguile me with your charms and wit. <laughs> Other nuts may crack easily in your hand, but this chestnut has a firmer resolve. <laughs> I would expect nothing less of your chestnuts, Duchess. Oh, you, sir, are a rogue. And a warm hello to you all. It's good to include them. It brightens the otherwise dreary world of mud and silver polish and whatever else it is they do around here, whatever it is, I'm sure I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and what's with Horatio? Can't you get a throat, Mother? What's the matter with him? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm afraid, Mother Uptight, that Horatio has come to harm. Oh, I see. Sauced again, Horatio! Disgraceful! Come, oh, Dumble Bunny, I require seating. <sighs> ashes, ashes, we all fall down! <laughs> Do Dumble Bunny away with you. Uh, Mother Uptight, Horatio hasn't succumbed to dream. He's. Uh, uh, yes, madam, her ladyship uh, is correct. Lord Uptight has been murdered, madam. Oh, of all the days! He would do something like this, always ruining things for others. Surprise parties, birthday presents, eliminations of the staff. The ratio will always steal your thunder. I mean, what was it I was just saying on the carriage ride right over Dunball Bunny? <laughs> And I was right to say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just when this arrived, well, we really must get you a purse, do What do you have there? Oh, mm. Uptight. Oh, it's an envelope. Smart girl. <laughs> it is an envelope from Buckingham Palace. A message from His Majesty King Edward. <gasps> Yes. Correct! One would assume this is His Majesty's response to my request to expand the hunting range of uptight board to include all manner of creatures, including gray squirrel, chipmunk, grouse, antelope, flamingo, gazelle, and peasants! <laughs> I'm certain you mean peasants. <laughs> 
Six of one, half a dozen the other. <laughs> Do we have much on um, um, antelope and uh, flamingo and a gazelle in our woods? We do not. And I would like to keep it that way. McDonald, fetch me the letter opener. Pardon me, Duchess, but this being the drawing room, we have no letter opener here. No letter opener in the drawing room. How very American of you. You know, when I was a girl, we had letter openers in every room. And two in the lavatory. Father did a lot of reading in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bigelman, go fetch the letter opener from the study for the Duchess. You mean the study all the way over on the other side of the abbey? The one in the far wing? Downstairs, all the way over there? Yes. But I didn't know What is it, Mr. Bakersman? It's so far away! Oh, for the love of Rosie, I'll go. Weak as water, you two. Oh, Grace, you there! Settle down, our fern. <laughs> really, Mr. Bakersman, I make that journey at least once a day. That's all it takes. What was that? <laughs> oh, never mind, never mind. I just I just found one here in the back of Horatio. Oh, Horatio, are you all right? Oh, I thought, I mean, we all fell. How was this possible? Quiet, quiet, everyone. He's, he's trying to speak. Yes, the Victoria's Secret, speak up. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> how are you? Um, 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 I mean, how are you, Father? <laughs> how am I? How am I? Someone wipes the kitchen knife in me. I've been stepped on, tripped over, pushed, pulled, prodded, and propped in a pile on a portion of the... The, uh, the Chesterfield. I was looking for a P word, but all right, yes, on the Chesterfield. <laughs> and after all that, she wants to know how I am. Quite well, Honoria. Yes. Quite. A brandy, if you would, MacDonald. Oh, yes, sir. For me, MacDonald. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Not uptight. How can this be? By all accounts, you are... were... dead. Yes, don't waffle, so Horatio. <laughs> Choose a position and stick with it. <laughs> Stay the course, stiff up the lip, chin up stout fellow, and all those other trite phrases that the common folk use to bolster their spirits. Am I right? <laughs> the answer to your question, Mrs. Hughes, is actually quite simple. You see, I was pissed. Oh, oh, such language, Horatio. No, no. Pissed, mother. Pissed. Yes, I heard you the first time, son. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> pissed. It's a scientific term. The knife pierced my spinal cord, disrupting the normal functions of my brain and leaving me immobilized. Not dead. Merely pissed. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I just proved it to be so. One of you tried to murder me and failed. I've always said I'm unkillable. <laughs> McDonald, what have I always said? Oh, so many things, sir. <laughs> Come now, McDonald, what have I always said? Come, oh, watch me take my bath, McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unkillable, MacDonald. Yes, unkillable. Why, Mrs. Pettigate, when you served that, that, whatever it was called, what was it? Ah, uh, jelly meals, stargazy pie, uh, black pudding, haggis, steak tartare, oh, liver and onion. That's it, liver and onions. The name alone is deadly. Uh. <laughs> but I swallowed down how many servings? Ah, uh, six, sir? You're darn right I was sick. I <laughs> uh, even had fern catered to me. You long ship, you said not to say anything about that to anyone. Uh. God, he means the food fern. <laughs> you and those bilge water concoctions when I let you experiment in the kitchen. Oh, yes, those. I wouldn't mind if you made something useful, but oh um, no, there she is. Making things like roasted duck, oh. watercress sandwiches, oh. mushroom and sage stuffing, <laughs> beef and barley soup. I've never heard of such rot. Pure poison. But that will do, Mrs. Pettigate. <laughs> Why, she never cleans up after herself. Never. It's true. I don't. 
Never. <laughs> Uses every bleeding pot and pan in the house, and you know who cleans up. Thank you, Mrs. Pattercake. You're welcome, Mrs. Hughes. But it is my job, after all. I'm always cleaning up after Fern's messes. <laughs> yes, well, where was I? Unkillable. Unkillable. Yes, unkillable. <laughs> Why, Mother, even as a child, I had every disease that you could think of. Oh, <coughs> of which you could think, Horatio. Don't let your pride get in the way of good grammar. Well said, madam. Oh, trust me, MacDonald. Even when they're grown, children need a good talking. Two. <laughs> Measles, mumps, scarlet fever, rheumatic fever, tuberculosis, halitosis, influenza, the bubonic plague. All of them tried, but none of them got me. I'm unkillable. Oh, really, Horatio? <laughs> really, Horatio, this has gone on quite enough. What is your point? Yes, Daddy, we understand. You're unkillable. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, it is rather tedious, dear. Someone tried to murder you. They didn't succeed. There's no reason to gloat. Yes, yeah, such prattling. It's as if you're addressing Parliament. <laughs> Parliament, my dear, is our legislative body, <coughs> much like your Congress. Although, if you hadn't declared independence to which that naughty little war, perhaps you'd have a Parliament too. Uh, I'm certain at the time you did whatever you could to make it come to pass. Yeah, of course. Uh, oh, uh, briefly, bitch. <laughs> Because the killer really incapacitated me, I was able to hear everything you said. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> All your lies, your desires, your misplaced loves, your selfishness, your demands, I defy you. But be careful, my cutthroat criminal. <laughs> Your killing contrivance cannot conquer my capable character. Now we could use just a bit. Quiet, you. <laughs> yes, quiet, you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now five o'clock. <laughs> oh, it is so good to see some of the old traditions still alive. Come, down, old buddy. Thank you, Dumble Bunny. Dumble Bunny, I'm worried. The tension in the air is as thick as my late husband's calves. I fear an attack of the vapors is imminent. Would you bring me my vapors, Robin? Ooh! One hour! <laughs> Shall I, shall I, shall I escort you to the table, Duchess? To the table, Mr. Wainwright, but no further. Given your charms, we could easily walk to Timbuktu and back. Although, you'll have to carry me most of the way. But the view would be spectacular. <laughs> oh, oh, coming, Mummy. Coming, Horatio. Oh, you go on ahead, Daphne, Honoria. I fear I must wait here for dramatic effect. <laughs> Is there anything I can get for you, sir? Yes, stay with me a moment, McDonald. So. McDonald, how long have you been with us? I'd say it doesn't fun. really matter. <laughs> I can trust you, can I not? Of course, sir. <coughs> McDonald, I fear I may have been a smidge pompous about being unkillable tonight. Just a dash, sir. I'm afraid the killer may strike again. Mm, now, sir? <laughs> it may be. It could be anyone here. I never saw my attacker, but I heard many things. I fear that the would-be killer is... <laughs> Did you hear that? 
Just the Abbey settling, sir? <laughs> settling? The Abbey is 150 years old. That's unsettling. <laughs> Check the windows, will you? Yes, sir. A blackout! McDonald, are you seeing this? <laughs> is this darkness, sir? <laughs> Horrible darkness. Then I am, sir. <laughs> Strong, because you are going to open the front door. I said stay strong. And you and you, 
<laughs> we must have reserved an emotional British conversation. <laughs> Daphne, do your best. <laughs> what? Do you really think this is the first dead body that I have encountered in this area? Oh, no. Why? I remember this affair I had with the young ambassador of West Mezebek of Obistan. <laughs> so young and full of passion he was, and on I was Oh, you did? Oh, you did? Oh, you did? Okay, I see your point. We'll save that story for another time. <laughs> the point is he died. Now go! <laughs> Oh, that reminds me of my fraternity days. Come on, Bobby, sit, sit. the murder of Lord Horatio Uptight. His name is actually much longer than that, but we haven't got all night. <laughs> Lord Uptight was murdered at the Abbey by some with a knife in the drawing room. Who did it? I had a clue. Sorry, but that's life. And when it comes to puzzles that boggle the brain, I intend to take a risk and strive for perfection. Yes, I intend to have a monopoly on this crime-solving operation. <laughs> the trivia of the pursuit, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Not worth the trouble. <laughs> Ball <to> that. <laughs> All I need is the right stratego. <laughs> right. I arrived at the Abbey shortly after 5 p.m. I knew that was the time because I could count the slaps on the butler's face. <laughs> the suspects were a shady lot. Lord Horatio's wife, now a willowy American widow. His daughter, um, well, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Mr. Marcus Wainwright, thoroughly charming. Mm. <laughs> Not that charming. 
<laughs> the cook and scullery maid, surely a salt and peppery pad. They had a vassal on Mrs. Hughes. You could cut diamonds on her eyebrows. <laughs> the butler and on the butler, a veritable pair of penguins if I ever saw one. <laughs> and finally, an elderly dowager duchess and an even more elderly nurse. Now I'm not saying they're all. But rumor has that they once took a field trip to the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> That was in 1066, you know. Blimey, learning history. Yet. Right, here they are. And one of them's a murderer. <gasps> oh, bollocks. Honestly, murder of oh, It's one thing to be accused of murdering my own son. But to be accused of murdering my own son by a mere inspector? <laughs> Preposterous. Excuse me. I would very much like to. Oh, now see what you've done to my grammar. Split infinitives all over the rug. That'll have to be cleaned. <laughs> oh, a very large sherry, please. Very good. Now, wait a minute. I shall do no such thing. A common constable investigating the death of an uptight. Oh, I would have insisted upon a chief inspector, or a commissioner, or an admiral. Oh, that's the Navy, The British Navy, definitely, is not to be taken lightly. Our finest men are out there riding the waves. It's true. <laughs> that is so. If I may, madam, perhaps you would prefer Lance Corporal. Lance? Philip? Archibald? I don't care what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anything is better than an inspector. Maybe we need a nurse major. A sub major? I think you mean a sergeant major. Oh, oh, a sergeant major. Well, then, what's a nurse major? Oh, it's a cluster of stars, girl. <laughs> constellation. A constellation? I thought that was a crazy block when you came in last. No, that's a constellation. <laughs> Isn't that deep reflection observation about something? No, that's contemplation. <laughs> Isn't that mutual reciprocal relationship between two things? No, that's a correlation. <laughs> no, you mean like the ceremony where they make someone a king? That's a coronation. <laughs> oh, no, you mean like the pretty flower? That's a carnation. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the little crab? Like the little crab? That's a cross station. <laughs> <laughs> I say one thing clear. You're not getting a cross station or a coronation or a carnation. You're getting an inspector. They know an inspector and I'm it. You will answer my questions. You will do what I tell you. Now let's stop snapping our heads around to see who's talking. I want everyone on that side of the room. about the murder of Lord Uptime. Oh, yes, saw his lordship if prior to his death. <coughs> and who he spoke with his lordship before his death? <coughs> oh, was with his lordship here in this room prior to his death. <coughs> What's your name? Me? Uh, uh, Bakersman, sir. Bakersman, sir? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. His name is Dennis Bakersman. He's new. Miss Bakersman, it's very difficult for me to ask these questions. Will you keep making those faces? I'm sorry, sir, but it's no stumble by his third. What's the matter with her? She keeps speaking my bum, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop that! <laughs> I am certain in America it is common for anyone who wishes to speak down to the staff to do so, but we are in England, and Nurse Dumblebunny is in my employ, so if anyone is to admonish her for her impropriety, it shall be I. Really? Nurse Dumblebunny? <laughs> Nurse Dumblebunny, change places with someone if you please. <laughs> Right, where was I? <laughs> Let's review. Saw him. <laughs> Spoke to him. Right! <laughs> Here with him. And who was the last one to see 
see his lordship alive? <laughs> that would be me, sir. I, I sir. sir. You, ma'am. No, sir. He, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and you are? MacDonald, sir. I am the butler of Uptight Abbey. I have been in the late Lord Uptight's employ ever since he won me from General Mortimer Thistlewhite, <laughs> retired. In a particular heated game of Pachisi. <laughs> I see. And what happened the last time you saw his lordship alive? He expressed concern that his killer was nearby, sir. And then it appeared that he was shot, hit over the head with a blunt object, stabbed in the back, and poisoned. <laughs> well, that's Horatio for you. Always showing off. <laughs> I see. Uh, now, where were the rest of you when all this happened? The room. <laughs> so, MacDonald, you were the only one with his lordship at the time of his death. It would appear so, sir. Well, if you ask me, we got our killer right here. <laughs> I beg to differ, Inspector. The butler did it is such a trite solution. <laughs> Certainly that's too cliché for an inspector of your caliber. Do you really think so? <laughs> Indeed I do, sir. Don't you agree? <laughs> yes, 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 just like a real inspector. Oh, 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 I am, uh, I am, uh, Distraught, madam. I am, a uh, distraught, madam. And I want to know what you're going to do about it, Inspector. <laughs> Excuse me. Then take the first corridor on your right. Head all the way down, then 
take the sandwich on your left. No, no, I mean armament hallway. No one of all the suits of armor. Make a right past the gilded furniture from 1520, and then take the third door on your left. This will lead you down a second set of stairs. Take these to the third landing and pass through the fifth door on your left. This is a shortcut. Now you can pass right along the bottom of the bazaar, but if you go past the hook, you've gone too far. It's the first door on your right. The least of the hallway that puts you in the study, which is the sixth door on your left. So, <laughs> that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. No one leaves this room. business on our own without the interference of Yachtland Scar. Oh, I said, I said Yachtland Scar! Oh. My, the sherry is potent. <laughs> so we must ferret out the killer. Oh, I like ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as much as I like. How are we to do that? I mean, it's not like somebody's going to open up and admit they murdered the master. I'll admit it. <laughs> <laughs> you may not realize this, but um, I'm an awkward girl. <laughs> Father would always say to me, Honoria, you are an awkward girl. So I, I begged him to let me change my image. I wanted to... He was my inheritance to become something more, to become someone pretty, to be with the times. <laughs> but he refused. And he said, Honoria, the only thing worse than an awkward girl is a pretty awkward girl. <laughs> I want to be pretty awkward. I want to bob my hair and have parties with liqueur and, and purchase jazz recordings and drive a motor car and be pretty awkward. So I killed him for the money and the life I always dreamed. <laughs> Noria, the confession was pretty awkward, was it? I would say the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, Lady Daphne. Or should I say, Daphne Jablonski? Alias Daphne the Dagger, the most dangerous female assassin in Chicago, Illinois! <laughs> That's a lie. It's a truth. All right, it's a true. <laughs> I'm Daphne the Dagger. <laughs> I'm hired by an up-and-coming Chicago gangster to remove one Horatio Uptight, who had swindled him out of a gross of beef. <laughs> My plan? Wine, dining, porcupine. <laughs> 
you see? I have this thing for no good, crummy, underhanded bums. And that was the ratio to a T. I held him up with the big whiny luck. Before long, he had swept me off my feet into the world of upside airy. He taught me culture. He taught me refinement. <laughs> he taught me that a man dressed as a woman could be hilarious. <laughs> I discovered he had hired the same gangster to have me bumped off. So, in order to save my own life, I did the job I was hired to do. And that is why I killed him. Ugh, what a riveting story. You Americans and your gangland fighting. Such piffle. You may be beer brawling football match any day. Another. <clears throat> I managed to find a trophy room, but where was I supposed to go from there? Go score it on your right, Inspector. Oh, thank you. Cheers. And no one leaves this room. <sighs> a dog who kills to be pretty. Uh, a mother who's a hired assassin. I mean, what's next? <laughs> Perhaps a butler who doesn't know how to bustle. <laughs> <gasps> what do you say, Miss Pancake? You haven't bottled a day in your life, and somehow you managed to get a job here at Uptight Abbey, number four on Great Britain's list of most eligible abbeys. <laughs> highly suspicious, if you ask me. Is it highly suspicious, may I ask? <clears throat> Oh, is it one o'clock already? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's true. I'm not a very good butler. Mm. I never wanted to be one. My father was a butler here at Uptight Abbey many years ago. He got fired for misplacing the fireplace tongs in this very drawing room. Fired on the spot for a simple mistake. My father pleaded for his job, but Lord Uptight was heartless. My poor father, raising nine. Teen children <laughs> on his own in a two room shack with a wooden leg. Oh, now he was unemployed. Oh, that's terrible. That's so terrible. How long did you find a working? For an hour and a half. <laughs> so that's why I decided to get a job here as a maid. Butler! A butler! <laughs> Confront Lord Uptight, get my revenge, and my father's last wages, no matter the cost, and that's why I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> and for an hour and a half's worth of wages, that's ludicrous. <laughs> ludicrous, Mr. Wainwright, as ludicrous as a pipe organ? <gasps> True, one of my many charity works was replacing the pipe organ at the church of St. Broderick the Lackadaisical. <laughs> I was in charge of installing the B-flat pipe. We'd never had one before. Fortunately, I was able to locate the exact pipe we needed in Dusselhausen's Preckenpfeffer, a quaint little village in Germany. What was the name of that village? Dusselhausen's Preckenpfeffer! <laughs> I had made arrangements to have the pipe delivered by the Venetian goat cart, wrapped in shiny silk and padded with layers of Scandinavian sparrow down. The wheels were reinforced with pure Peruvian rubber for shock absorption, and the driver was versed in eight languages. <laughs> that sounds expansive. Uh, expressive. It must have cost a pretty penny. <laughs> it did. But when the cart arrived, there was no pipe. Horatio had intercepted the cart and replaced the pipe with a bamboo tiki idol 
carved to look like Queen Victoria playing the tuba. <laughs> you should have heard the altar boys trying not to titter during Vespers. Those bitches. <laughs> Horatio deprived the chapel of the music that I wanted to provide, just as he has deprived me of my rightful title to this abbey, and that is why I killed him. Oh. <laughs> you know, Queen Victoria and I were sorority sisters. <laughs> Could that woman put away the petty force? Oh, oh, she'd be all like, we are not amused, but we could go for their tray of cheesecake. <laughs> oh, oh, such memories. Speaking of food, why don't we hear from the patty cakes? Oh. Should I say, Gladys and Fern's pate cake? You tried to hide it, but you are the world famous French chef, Gladys pate cake, the toast of Perry, the creme de la creme of the kitchen. <laughs> all right, savory. Oh, I am the famous Gladys pate cake, chef of renown, born and raised in Dijon.
promised to tell me that my services would no longer be required in Uptight Abbey, that I was to pack my belongings and leave first thing tomorrow morning. And why? Because he wanted to turn my bedroom into a relaxation room for himself. A room with hunting gear and sporting paraphernalia and an oversized Victor Victrola. Kind of where a man can be a man. A cave in Uptight Abbey? That's what his study is for. Well, he didn't appreciate the history of this abbey. The regal name of Uptight meant nothing to him. And he were going to hire me. Me? The head of his household? How long would it be before he would eliminate the rest of the staff? Oh, oh, oh madam, you wouldn't let that happen, would you? Oh, well. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. <laughs> <laughs> I do whatever I could. Perhaps. Oh, good to keep them on their toes, Daphne. You may be a real lady hit. How dare he try to take this Abby away from me? This Abby is my life. I alone keep it moving. I alone keep it perfect. I alone keep it the beacon of good taste, class, and refinement that our illustrious history requires! <clears throat> and all of you do some of that, too. <laughs> but I couldn't let him smear the name of Uptight Abbey with his dirty dealings and his torrid affairs and his rotten disposition and his cave of man's stuff! <laughs> That's why I killed him. It was self-preservation! <laughs> I like her. She is good. <laughs> you always come work for me, Mrs. Hughes. Do you live in an abbey? Oh, an abbey. I dear. I live in a 16th century castle. Dulst and cobwebs for days. <gasps> <laughs> if you are through... Donald, you have a confession too? But I thought you said. Yes, so. I know, sir. I did say that it was a cliche for the butler to commit the crime. Well, I committed a crime. Well, I'm a butler. An under butler, Mr. Bakersman. And a shabby one at that. Propriety, Bakersman. Oh. No, I committed the murder for one reason, and for one reason alone. I am desperately in love with you, madam. <coughs> with me? <laughs> Begging your pardon, madam? Uh. <laughs> with Lady Daphne. What? No, no gasps of astonishment? No. no, no. Well, Frankie, we've all known you've loved her for some time now. Oh, I knew and I knew it about two days after I started. I'm as smart as a sack of wet kittens, and I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Do you really? No, oh, Daphne. Just when I think you're rising to the top, you turn out to be a Yankee doodle. <laughs> <laughs> My days were filled with drudgery, setting out Lord Artai's clothes, tying his shoes, planning his day, mixing his drinks, <laughs> toting his golf clubs, watching him bathe, <laughs> putting him to bed, singing him a lullaby, but I tried barely any meaning. And then he brought home Lady Daphne, the world became quite topsy-turvy in the most marvellous way. Lord Otay never appreciated her. He never cared for or what she did or what she said. He gave her polish and training, oh yes, but it was all for show. He, he only saw the rough and never saw the diamond that was already there. <laughs> Understand the way he treated her. He was smug, unfaithful, and demeaning. 
and so in order to make our lives better and in particular to make her life better I decided to murder his lordship at any cost that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard <laughs> thank you madam I hope that in time you will be able to overlook my lowly station and accept me as your own it's all I've ever wanted and that is why I kept it. <laughs> you mean you love her even knowing she's a hired assassin? <laughs> what did I say, Mrs. Pancake? I enjoy a bit of danger. That's enough of that. It took me further to find that bleak and study. Why don't anyone tell me this box to stay with so? Fast. When I got there, Lord Horatio was still alive. <laughs> Scared me half to death with all this gasping and lurching. So I picked up a death snare and knocked him on the head. <laughs> I think I might have killed him. <laughs> What's going on in here? Uh, no. yeah. well, she was in the wrong. <laughs> I've had a moment of clarity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Inspector Spectre, we have been reviewing the facts at hand and have come to one startling conclusion. When Lord Horatio was found murdered for the first time, and well, then again for the second time, we never contacted the proper authorities. And then out of the blue, <coughs> an inspector calls. So who are you, and what really brought you to Uptight Abbey? <gasps> I know. <laughs> right. I've had a personal grudge with the ratio of Uptight that had tormented Abbey since we were mere children. He stalked me, cheated me, showed cheated me, and made my life a veritable hell. Why, right, Mr. Wainwright talked about him being denied his right to the Abbey. Well, I've been denied the right to my entire life. You don't mean... Oh, yes, I do mean. I am not Inspector Reginald Spector from Scotland Yard. I am Henry Cornelius Percy Montgomery Uptight II, the twin brother of Horatio Uptight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boy, I thought you were dead. That's what Horatio wanted you to think. He was born nearly one minute before me, claimed that made him the true Lord Master of Uptight Abbey. Living in his shadows ever since doing his dirty work. Well, I traveled to America to negotiate a mob contract on Lady Daphne's life. I spied on the members of the household staff and reported their missteps. I learned eight languages just so that I could transport to practical joke by goat cut. <laughs> Finally, he made me captain of the ill fated HMS Impossible, which floundered off the coast of Africa. What about my story? Sorry, Honoria, no. That was just awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but unlike Mrs. Patty Cake's unfortunate husbands, I managed to survive the ordeal. I swore I'd get revenge on my brother. So I made my way back to England, <coughs> crept into the Abbey, stole the kitchen knife, and confronted Horatio in the drawing room. When he refused to allow me my place as a member of this family, and well, the money of which I was owed, I snapped him. I made a hasty exit. But I learned. As I watched from the shrubbery outside, that he was really pissed. You were as well. So I got on the disguise of a Scotland Yard inspector so I could re-enter the home and finish the job. Not knowing that all of you were killing him as well. But... <laughs> oh, Henry, my boy, it's so good to have you back. Although, I should warn you that in your absence we did convert your bedroom into a yoga studio for Nurse Double Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> How truly amazing. <laughs> so we all killed Horatio? It would appear so. But how did he really die? I mean, which one of us really did it? But don't look at me, dear. Horatio was an unbearable prat, even as a child. But his bad behavior began earlier than you might think. 
when he was born, he came out breech. <laughs> All ankles and knees and shins and elbows. <laughs> and at full term, he was nearly the size of a small steamer trunk. He took the wind out of my sails for weeks to ride around on the back of Nurse Dumble Bunny. <laughs> but I broke side saddle like a lady. And despite my best efforts to expose him to ruthless diseases such as measles, mumps, scarlet fever, rheumatic fever, tuberculosis, salatosis, influenza, and bubonic plague, <laughs> nothing would rid me of my petulant progeny. So I did what any good mother would do. I planted a time bomb in his dressing room. <laughs> I may be so bold, madam. There is still one person from whom we have yet to hear. Nurse Dumblebunny, do you have something to add? Uh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, no, Dumblebunny. <laughs> if you have something to say on the matter, you had better spit it out. Oh, gosh. Uh, hmm. 
Let's see. One day, McDonald, Mrs. Hughes, and Bakers are out in the garden. And they discover a trove of Roman artifacts. They sell it to the British Museum and become wealthy in their own right. Oh, oh, we are rich! We are rich! We are rich! Oh, yes, it's all possible. But, no, 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 none of that happens. I'm sorry, I just, I don't know how I want to end this. I guess I'm going to have to mull it over. Creative process, you know. Sometimes you just have to walk away and let it sit. But well, I want to know what happens next. next. No, no, I do. And you can't just leave us. I'm right, and he's not going to. Oh, oh stop it, Dutchie. Grab him, Mr. Bakersman. No, no, wait, wait a minute. What do you think you're doing? You can't keep me here. Well, you can't leave us hanging waiting for the rest of our stories to be told. You have to stop. You have to kill her. You put him in the car. I want to mention all of that atrocious grammar. And I think he's an American. What's the matter? Townsend, I hereby arrest you for the murder of Lord Horatio Uptight. Wait, wait! What? I have one last request. One last hope for us all. I think I know how to end this. And what is that? Blackout. Oh! oh. oh.